real quick, just talk about, I mean, I don't know if you could do it quickly, but just your thoughts on the value of marriage in 2020. I think marriage has to be redefined from being a literal, I mean, a legal contractual obligation to a spirit to spirit, soul to soul, intimate connection. Mm. Too many people have the legal part done, the prenup and the license and the wedding, and they have, still haven't met soul to soul, heart yeah. to heart. You, yeah. you know what we I mean? We don't know each other. Yeah. Most people are getting married and they don't have a deal breaker. What's your deal breaker? Non-negotiable. What is your non, that's it. What is your non-negotiable deal breaker? You hit me, I'm out. You cheat, I'm out. You take my money, I'm out. You cuss my mama, I'm out. Go into the marriage knowing that. Instead of two weeks in, now you don't call your mother a, a, a dirty name and slap me in the face. Mm. Now I'm shocked. No. Who are you? <laughs> right. These are, like, I, I see it so many, so many times, especially in my experiences. And in my experiences come more by way of men rather than females, right? When I say men, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it in a homosexual way or heterosexual way. I've just been in a industry that was masculine and dominated by men. And I would see sides of men that I'm like, yo, you married? I didn't know, bro, you ain't never come in your, the locker room with your, your ring on. I just see your girl and your kids at the games, you know what I'm saying? And I was so let down because when I, as I left my house at 17, I graduated early and went to college. And I kept seeing these examples of what I knew for the 17 years that I was in my household. I knew what marriage looked like. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, when you go into the world and you start seeing that y'all don't got the same values, <laughs> like my dad would never have done this. Like, hold on, hold on. So you mean to tell me? No, nah, not my dad. I know. And it makes you skew your filter becomes their future. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I, and and, it, and it's, it's wowing and it's exposing like, yo, it's, it's leaving me with more questions. Even now, being a public eye and you start seeing you're married, but that's her right there though. Look at her, look at her. Don't put your, put your phone down, put your phone. You know, and you see these things and you're saying like, that's, that's a, like, but you he gotta, married. You saw a marriage. I didn't yeah. see a marriage. I saw a dysfunctional entanglement. Mm. I saw a dysfunctional entanglement. I didn't know what a husband was. I, I didn't know what it looked like to have a, a provider and a protector in the house. I didn't know. And I married that unknown quantity, <laughs> you know, because I didn't know. I didn't have a, a concept. I had what I'm, I had Leave it to Beaver. I had Father Knows Best. I had Ricky Ricardo. That's what I had, because right. I didn't have it in the house. So some of what you're seeing is a function of the filter yeah. that people and what they had, you 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 were fortunate. You were fortunate. Yes. And I can say mistakes were made, mm-hmm. but even through those mistakes, it wasn't a loss. It was a lesson. Yeah, but you you got that, uh-huh. and maybe there wasn't a lot of trauma there for you. You know? Do you know how many fathers there are with teenage sons today who are in prison? Yeah. I had a case, I had the father, the grandfather, and the grandson were all in the same prison. Whoa. I had another case where the father and the son were in the prison, and the grandfather was in another prison. And, you know, the father and the son couldn't write the grandfather, because you can't write from one prison to the next prison. So they used to write me, and then I would send the letters to the, to the grandfather when I had a prison ministry. So you were lucky, you were very fortunate. I know, and appreciative. Mm-hmm. But like they say, life be life in. Yeah, life be life in. And I, I look at a situation where I am lucky, I am fortunate. And even going through a world where a lot is asked of you and even words that we didn't even know what it meant until you realized what it meant, like to be stoic. Yeah. To go through some stuff and still handle your business. But that's not healthy though. And that's why a lot of men now have prostate cancer and diabetes and hypertension. We don't want you to be stoic. We want you to be present. 
We want you to be courageous. We want you to be uh, 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 lots of things, but not stoics, because stoic means neck down dead. Men, our men were taught not to feel, not to acknowledge what they feel, but not even not to acknowledge it, don't even feel it. Mm. <laughs> and if you feel it, don't tell nobody. Mm -hmm. that, that's killing them. That's mm. killing our men. I want you to feel it, but I want you to be the soft place to fall, to tell me how you feel as a woman, and I'm not gonna try to talk you out of it. I want you to ride that feeling all the way down, and I'm not gonna try to stop it, and I'm not gonna try to talk you out of it, because I have faith that wherever that feeling takes you, you can handle it, and I'm gonna be here waiting for you when you get back. That's how the kind of relationships. Thank you.